The elite who occupy the commanding heights of digital reality are suicidal nihilists. Suicidal nihilists know that there is no longer any substantive purpose to their willing, but they would always prefer to go on willing than not to act at all. They can very happily ally themselves with a the notion of nuclear holocaust or perfect exterminism. Technology has become so powerful in its capacity for destruction that free humanity cannot afford to let psychopathic technocrats with delusions of grandeur repeat the mistakes of their forebears, because it is highly probable that this time they may destroy everything, including themselves in their mad rush for godhood. In this film, we have chronicled the Overlord's bloody orgy of experimentation, which already claimed the lives of more than 150 million people in the 20th century. And now, they are promising to deliver an invincible tyranny that will dwarf their past exploits. In the days of World War II, there were sovereign nations and armies to stand against Hitler's final solution. Once world government is in place, no one will be able to stop the New World Order's plans for global population reduction. For those immune to psychological programming, hundreds of FEMA camps have already been built throughout the United States. In their quest for population reduction, no method is off the table. These dark builders intend to release a string of man-made bioweapons plagues, each one worse than the last while at the same time expanding the police state to enforce an orderly extermination of the population, all in the name of fighting invisible terrorists. And the Georgia Guidestones stand today as a cold testament to the elite's sacred mission. To have a two-class system where the underclass are forced to live as slaves in tiny enclosed cities, while the elite enjoy the land of the earth, evolve into superhumans with the aid of advanced implantable technologies, live eternal lives, and travel throughout the cosmos. This is the promise given to the inner members of the New World Order and the agenda of the Bilderberg Group. In 2007, Jim Tucker continued his 30-year quest to expose the globalist by traveling to Istanbul, Turkey, the site of Bilderberg, 2007. Jim Tucker, thank you for coming on, my friend. It's always fun. Jim, tell us what you saw today when you were out at the uh, Ritz Hotel. We were at the Ritz Carlton. It looked like a typical uh, Bilderberg scenario. They had the armed guards all around the place. They had platoons of uh, uh, cops in for, uh, formation waiting for the disbursement. They also had uh, cops all the way around the building, and they had all those high tech things where every member can uh, hear whatever is spoken in any language instantly translate into his own language so they can uh, keep up with it. Let's just ask him directly. Okay. 
Is Bilderberg meeting here this weekend? You can look. He's right here. We had my two personal cops following me today. I was not aware of it because my nose is always sticking to the camera and my jaws are always flapping. But the uh, TV crew said, those guys are uh, going to follow you. And their car followed us out to the uh, hotel. Then they identified the two uh, cops in plain clothes, not, not business suits, but sports shirts and so forth. Yeah. That's the car that's been on our ass? Yeah. You want to photograph him? Yeah. You are, aren't you? Well, they're your very likely Bilderberg boys. John Elkin, owner of Fiat and a fellow Bilderberger, thought that they could take a stroll off the grounds without being noticed by the commoners. I was thinking about that. This Bilderberg attendee sneered at our camera. This carload of kingpins gave the media a murderous look and seemed shocked that they would dare point a camera in their direction. In 2007, the Bilderberg Group received the heaviest global coverage in its history. Jim Tucker witnessed press conferences attended by hundreds of members of the media and a new generation of info warriors, like reporter Paul Dornenu of Romania, are tracking the elite no matter where they hide. Now, Jim, my governor, Rick Perry, it's in the front of the Dallas Morning News. The headline reads, Texas Governor Rick Perry to attend Bilderberg. What does it mean to have the governor of Texas in the Dallas Morning News just admitting he's going to Bilderberg Group? It means he's a potential president, even as the obscure governor of Arkansas, Bill Clinton, lost his virginity at the Bilderberg meeting in Baden-Baden, Germany in 1991 that he's elected president the following year. Now, if he goes nowhere in a run for the White House in the years ahead, they'll drop him like an old shoe. They do that often. But uh, officially, uh, Bilderberg considers Governor Rick Perry a potential president of the United States. Uh, yes, it's a, a violation of the Logan Act, uh, for which uh, the White, Bill Clinton's White House was fined $300,000 which means the taxpayers paid it. When Perry returned to Texas from Istanbul, we were determined to hold him accountable for his treasonous actions. Tonight, telling you we're not going to put up with it. 